Sirius XM 106, it's volume feedback. Nick Carter, Lori Majewski, you're hearing The Cure. Perhaps you've heard of them. <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame members. And uh, some very special friends have joined us. Roger O'Donnell of the Self Same Band. And our returning champion, Orion Williams, is back in the building. Well, I, I christened you earlier the, uh, the alt-rock Hitchcock. That's who you are, kind of. Thank you. And, Filmmaker. And she was like, well, but Jeff Buckley. I'm like, yeah, but Jeff Buckley had like an alt thing, too. I was a little at, bit. I was at a many an alternative station and played him into the ground. Right. Well, so. the two of you came together because we know Orion, and yeah. I remember watching the um, Morrissey, Young Morrissey biopic, uh, England is Mine, which Orion executive produced, and I went, Roger O'Donnell? Pro- was a producer on this? And, and and it's funny because people who watched it in the theater with us at the premiere here in New York were saying the same thing. A bunch of Cure fans came up to me afterwards mm-hmm. and were like, wait a minute, so, so is that how you two know each other? Uh, no, we've known each other for years. We are introduced by a woman called Caroline, Caroline Eslin. Yeah. From, she's from, I met her she's in She's from York. Mississippi. She's a costume designer she's like you have to meet my friend Roger yeah she's, she said to me oh you should meet Orin you'll really like him and I didn't <laughs> <laughs> no, we, understandable we, understandable <laughs> we met each other years ago and it took us I was talking about this last night it took us about five years before we clicked yeah. and then in like instantly we became best friends hmm. but so, it took five years to get to that so point. how did you get involved with that film then uh, Orion um, called me, and I think they'd had one of the major investors pulled out, and they needed money. <laughs> and we'd talked for years about doing my getting involved investing in a film. And he knew how much I hate Morrissey, so he thought it would be a perfect match. Well, that's funny, right, because when you were on Debatable, our afternoon show, the day that I think The Cure was nominated for The Rock Call this year, it, it was funny you were talking about your dislike. They were saying, should the Smiths go in next? And you were like... Eesh. <laughs> So wait, but, but, but and is, I was like, but wait, he, he was a producer on a Morrissey But pick. is your issue musical or personal? Because uh, quite musical, frankly, musical, personal, everything, basically. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, you know, there's been a war be- going on between the Smiths and the Cure since I can remember. Really? Uh, based on what? I don't know. He's, well, based on it, he's an idiot. <laughs> well, everybody well, knows that. Robert and Morrissey, Robert and Morrissey have yeah, always, always disliked each other. And you work that. for the Smith. Yeah. We, we can put it that way. Well, and then, so I tell these guys, okay, I'll invest, but we need an, an NDA so that nobody ever finds out. And then it got to a stage that it kind of leaked out. So I can't remember how it leaked out. And then I was I was with Robert and we were supposed to be somewhere until like midnight. And I, I, I was hoping that he hadn't found out. And it got to three minutes to midnight and he came up to me and said, um, so Roger... What about this film? I'm like, shit. (laughs) And then he said, well, why did you do it? And I said, well, I hate him and I could make a lot of money out of it. (laughs) So that's basically why I did it. I thought you were going to say, all right, I'll invest, but the main character has to die in the end. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I did have an alternative ending, but they wouldn't go for it. (laughs) That is too much. It was good. Roger saved the film. He kept it going. It was falling apart. And it was kind of a text initially. Yeah, so you blame me. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Roger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good. Well, congratulations, Roger. I, I saw you briefly in the hall when it looked like a black like cloud was drifting past me <laughs> to go to the red carpet. And now, of course, that little interview that, that was happened on the red carpet has gone viral where yeah. the very overexcited blonde interviewer is like, are you so excited to go to the Rock and Roll? How excited are you? And he's like, obviously not as excited <laughs> yeah. as you. What was it like out there? Was it surreal? Because yeah. it was different th- out there where he was being cheeky and then he becomes very emotional when when you guys came in to well perform. you know we don't do a lot of press we haven't done any press in years and years and we yeah. don't do like photo set i think the last photo session we did was in 2012 and having a, you know we live very quiet uh outside of when we're on stage it's a, the cure has always been it's within its own world and when we're kind of exposed to that those situations it's very weird at the beginning i'm sure it is for everyone but uh, she was a little overexcited, wasn't yeah. she? <laughs> little, 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 little too American for you guys. 
Well, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> well, well no, okay, well, here's a serious question. You joined really at the apex. Uh, and uh, no, no, I was responsible for the apex. <laughs> I joined on the ascent. But you, that is actually not, not oh, hyperbolic. I mean, no, no, you, no, he is true. responsible for the, d the sound of disintegration. Yeah. Thank you very much. Plain song, the first minute is Roger O'Donnell. Well, my question for you is that, uh, that's what I was getting at, thank you. No, but my question for you is this. Um, how does collaboration work? Is he, I mean, again, he was very emphatic about he wanted so many people to go in because he didn't want people to think the cure is just Robert Smith. But is he, is he one that um, he comes with ideas? Are you available? I mean, are you allowed to develop your own sort of lines? Yeah, of or, does, or does he give you your yeah. parts? How does it work? Yeah, and sometimes it's, it shocks you. You know, you play a part and you think, oh, Robert's going to hate that. And uh, he's like, oh, I like that bit. Let's keep that one. So um, it is collaborative. I mean, generally, the demos that we bring as individual we write individually and we bring the demos and we listen to them all together and then we mark them and then we choose the best ones and then ultimately robert chooses the songs that he thinks he can write lyrics to and sing to so then we if you heard for example the demo to love song you'd say oh that's it all the parts are exactly the same and simon wrote the music for that and um but then we do i think over the years we've become more collaborative and we we will you know play to our strengths and add bits um it's an interesting process but, but robert has a very clear uh and definite idea of how he thinks it should sound um he also mentioned backstage that the process of coming up with the songs that you were going to play at the rock hall what was actually <coughs> collaborative yeah we usually don't argue with him <laughs> Because uh, it's pointless. So, uh, you know, when <laughs> set list, when he chooses a set list, uh, I'll, I might say something and Simon might say something. Um, but this, he said, yeah. well, first of all, we didn't know we were coming until like two weeks ago because he just couldn't decide what whether we should do it. And then deciding the songs, he's like, I want to do a new one. I want to do one 10 minute new song. I'm like, are you insane? <laughs> And uh, we need to do, you know, it's not our audience. It wouldn't be our audience at the show. So we need to, you know, try and make everyone happy. And then he, he suggested some, uh, a song, um, four songs. And I, strangely, uh, three of us said at the same time, why don't we do Shake Dog Shake as a tribute to Andy? <coughs> Excuse me, who died recently. Who very sadly, the Rock Hall of Fame in their great wisdom refused to accept along with uh, Matty and Phil Thornley which we all thought was absolutely ridiculous there were 10 of us up there why wouldn't 13 well it would have ended up being right. 12 and it would have been such a nice thing to do for Andy but they just refused and that really pissed us off to be honest and they seem to be you know it's an arbitrary self-appointed organization that in my opinion has no basis in <clears throat> well we don't you know it's not like I, I don't think the fan vote counts so much. You probably know more it than votes I do. For, it, for all the votes that go that you could vote for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it counts for one. So if you win the fan vote, uh, it counts one. for one vote yeah, well, out of the hundreds that are cast. That's that's uh, they don't um, portray it like that, do they? They they make it seem mm. like it's some. They're just a bunch of old guys from the music business that lost their jobs in record companies, patting themselves on the shoulders, saying. We know who should be there. They don't know who played roles in in The Cure, who was pivotal or important to our career. Well, we were wondering, <coughs> I mean, we were wondering, well, a lot of the a lot of the British bands or the UK bands outside of America don't necessarily really get the rock hall because <laughs> the rock hall, no, I mean, honestly, because we the don't rock get hall, it. Right. We, it but, doesn't mean anything in England. It doesn't mean, I mean anything to any of us. Well, I wonder how we're much we're not hockey it, players. <laughs> how much of it going back and forth you say you, you weren't sure up until two weeks ago that you're even going to show and we wondered if, if the cure was going to show if the cure was going to show and play how much of it was or how much of the consternation was well we want to get everybody in that we want to get in or how well, much of it was just like it why does this matter to us well it doesn't matter to us i mean we like i said we don't do press we don't we're not like kind of like Radiohead, I thought that their speech was very honest as well. Those guys, we don't, we've never played the game, we've never played the press or 
you know, we never, I don't think we did a uh, national US TV until ni 89, 90, maybe not even then, mid 90s, I think. We've just never done that. So it's not important to us. You know, we make music for other reasons. So it really is weird, you know, and also being English, you know, we don't have those kind of things. We're not self-congratulatory. We're probably self-deprecating more. You know. But did that change when you got in the room? Because we spoke a lot this morning. When you <laughs> with the mad woman? <laughs> no, not with the mad woman on the carpet. When you actually, when when you were inducted by Trent, and then you then you took the stage to perform. Because when Robert came backstage afterwards, he was quite emotional, honest, and talking about how he wasn't sure how to process all of this, mm -hmm. but. He talked about how he was, in fact, happy that you guys did come and that you did play. And I think, I, I, I don't know, did you f feel differently when you got up there because Trent Reznor was truly a fan and you could feel that there were so many fans in the arena? Yeah, you got love in the room. Lots. Yeah. You really did. Uh, I was more concerned about playing. I mean, for, it just felt like a very short concert to me. Mm. Like we started playing, I was like, "Oh, we're doing a show," which we, which is what we do. You know, it's what we love to do. So I didn't really think beyond that. How did you think the show went? Because I thought we it thought was really good. It. We thought you killed <laughs> when it. When we, when you play TV shows or whatever, it's usually pretty tense, and we usually uh, tighten up. But we just played as if it was a show. And we, we were playing. We, we did do t two festivals the week before in South Africa. So we were, you know, we have been playing. But it did feel really good, and I was surprised at how how well we played. But I think that's just a reflection on the current lineup, how comfortable we are with each other, and uh, which has not always been the case. So mm. backstage at Madison Square Garden a few years ago, and this is going back right when you had those three shows in a row, sold out shows. Yeah. Robert had said to me that. We, I love this lineup so much. I love the way we sound. We are going straight into the studio right after the, the tour. We're going to make that record. It's going to come straight out. And it's several years later. <laughs> so what that happened? Well, haven't you learned anything? <laughs> well, he was so excited. You never believe anything Robert says. <laughs> it's taken me 30 years to get to that stage. But I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, now you have 19 songs. They're not mixed, but you um, you also are going to be embarking on this disintegration tour, right? Yeah. So it's interesting. It's like, is it going? Are you going to play the disintegration stuff, then drop the record, then come back and play the new record? You know What's what? The Let's take a break, and you <laughs> I'll can think about that. the answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you can give us a cogent answer. <clears throat> all right, <laughs> Roger O'Donnell and Orion Williams are here, and according to Lori, who knows all, because I'm always out of the fucking loop. You have some announcement to make. A couple. All right, stick around. Speak hey, back. we'll be right back. Feedback. I'm Nick Carter. That is Lori Majewski. We are with uh, Roger O'Donnell of The Cure, but a wonderful gentleman in his own right as well. You got your own identity, man. Have I? Yeah. Let me just check my And of course, our good friend Orion Williams. Do you want to drop your little uh, truth bomb now? Yeah. Well, there's sure. Why not? <clears throat> You're a busy dude, man. I got to give it to you. You got a lot of irons in the fire all of a sudden. It's right. a little crazy. Because so many of the things you've worked on have just like taken years to come to fruition. So just to remind our listeners that yes. you produced... Control, one of my favorite music films of all time, that the biopic terrible. of you Joy Division. That? that was a definitive <laughs> rock uh, bio biopic. And Roger was the keyboard. I was consultant. a keyboard consultant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really. Yeah. Which was quite an important role. So you were back there, like saying, "No, no, no, you no, this, well, no, this I never." Old analog <laughs> pre Oberheim. <laughs> he sent me an email. He's like, "What's this video? What is that keyboard they're playing?" And I knew of right away. So we got really? the exact keyboard. Yeah. Wow. Needed the exact one. I always say details matter, it's very but you, important. you know, you and I are friends off air. So like, I always hear about stuff that's going on. I always want to talk about it, but I can't, but you do have uh, several big announcements. There's a lot of things on. going on and, uh, certainly control has opened up a door for music biopics and documentaries and, and maybe it's the Roger O'Donnell one next. I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> that was what, that was like 10 years ago now. Ten, control yeah, going came on out 11. 2007. <gasps> yeah. Came out 2007. We shot it in 2006. Um, there's a documentary in the works that's uh, just starting up. We filmed a little bit on Billy Idol, and Jonas Ackerland's directing it. Wow. 
which is great. That is cool. Uh, Billy is, uh, <laughs> he's uh, excited. I know he had his book that came out uh, a couple years ago. And How long got, is it going to be? Like five minutes? It's going to be uh, oh. six. You, six didn't, you didn't read the book. <laughs> you didn't read the book. Billy Idol's been through some shit. Yeah. Has he? Yeah, he's got a lot to say. Does yeah. he? Yeah. He, has, he almost ended his life in a motorcycle accident. Uh, absolutely, yeah. As well as many other ways. And uh, I think this is going to be his uh, coming out party in a way to talk about his... But where's he been for the last 30 years? Oh, he's still he's, doing his thing. He's got a show on first He's still doing his thing. You know, he, and, and he and Steve still do things. Yeah, they played the Unplugged show at the, to uh, the town hall the other night, Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. Hey, if you need investors... You would. Uh, yeah, I was going. Well, I was going to bring this up. Maybe <laughs> April Fools. No. no. <laughs> Roger, oh you? wait, it's an April Fools. You're not really making a film about him. No. no yes. Oh, it is. Yeah. Stop it. You didn't see his award-winning turn in The Wedding Singer. <laughs> uh, I don't think I saw that film. Out. <laughs> is it good? You are covered in shame. Something tells me he wouldn't love it. I don't think he'd like it. <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't like it. And then, Orion, uh, you, you have another film that's almost done now. Another one that's almost done, uh, directed by uh, uh, a friend who did the Storm Thurgerson documentary. Mm. I that saw I that. That was a good film. You liked that one? Yeah. Yeah. It spoke to you more. Well, I was I, I, I studied as a graphic designer, so there I appreciated that, his work. Yeah. So this one's about Sid Barrett. Is that all right, Roger? Yeah, <laughs> we love Sid. I just run everything by him. I have to, you know. It's just yeah, and then the he way. does it anyway. <laughs> well, we all need sounding boards. We all need sounding. And boards. then the Jeff Buckley one is going to start filming soon. So yeah, this is the 25th anniversary of Grace this year. Wow, there are a lot of things coming out uh, in association with that uh, that anniversary, including a a book of his journals, which is coming out toward the end of the year, and some personal, you know, images and things like that that his mother Mary. And uh, Allison are uh, working on his niece. And um, what else? Um, a lot of times when films are in the works, um, there are casting changes. Is Reeve still... Uh, Reeve, Reeve's 100%. Reeve, Reeve still from... If you oh, don't that remember. guy was made to be in that film. Yeah. He really was. If yeah. you don't remember, he was uh, in Spider-Man, Turn on the Dark on Broadway. Where he was ex extraordinary in that. He's now in Town, which is uh, on Broadway. And that just started up... Uh, I think they're in previews now. And he's, Turn off the dark. Not turn on the dark. Sorry. He's incredible. He's just incredible. He's, I mean, he's 35. Jeff was, you know, around till 30. And he still looks younger than Jeff did when oh, he... the pictures when, you showed us, he looks, he, he looks like him. And he sounds him. just like him. And he well. sings exactly yeah. like him, which is even more crazy. I mean, exactly. And it's like, I mean, you know, Jeff had but his he, own soul. He's like an actor. He's an actor. Who, Who Jeff? Or? Yeah. No, that guy. Yeah. Reeves. Yeah. What was his name? He was just a musician first. Jeff. What about What's you? his name? What? Reeves Reeve. Carney. I am an actor. No, no, no. Were you a Jeff, a Jeff Buckley guy? <laughs> no. Wait, who the fuck do you like? Uh, <laughs> no one. Really, no one. I, know, I didn't even know Philip Glass. about... Philip Glass. I love Philip Glass. He loves Philip Glass. Oh, and Hendrix. How can you not? He Phil. wanted to play Hendrix on my yeah. Last Phyllis Jimmy show. Hendrix. Frank Zappa. I'm more into jazz and classical music. I don't really listen to rock. Well, this... It sounds awfully pretentious, but... I don't know. But listen to the music that you bring to the cure. I mean, it's very <coughs> lush, arranged. It's. It, I guess so. Yeah. And also prolific solo career. Um, prolific, I should mention. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, album every week. <laughs> <laughs> just took one off, so sorry. But wait, what jazz? <laughs> so when you say jazz, are you talking about jazz pianist or just jazz? Yeah, in Herbie Hancock is like what my absolute mentor and <laughs> hero. And every time I meet him, I tell him. That if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be playing music. Well, there's a lot. It's wow. funny too because there's a lot of these jazz cats are kind of purists too and don't necessarily go to the electronics. Mm. I mean, you know, oh, Herbie, Herbie loves the electronics. Yeah, of course, man. Herbie Hancock, Ramsey Lewis, guys like yeah. that. But you know, like when you say jazz keyboardist, I think all right, McCoy Tyner, you know, or like or whoever, you know, like Monk, or you know. In fact, on uh, I think Thursday night, no Wednesday night, we went to see Ron Carter play at the Blue Note. Mm. And I was standing, that sitting there, I was sitting there watching this guy, he's 80 years old, he's playing, he's like, his use of time and melody is just blows you away. And I'm thinking, okay, two nights time, I'm going to be inducted with a bunch of other idiots into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And this guy's such an incredible musician. It kind of put things in perspective. Yeah, Orion. Or yeah. <laughs> Where's yeah. the Ron Carter but, bio, Orion? By the yeah. way, I, was, I, I was sitting at the table with... Um, Next to Trent Reznor and the two Radiohead guys, Phil and Ed. And I'm telling this because of them. They were He's singing right. along to his music. Every word. 
Yeah. Yeah. Radio, my, what, what, my solo album? Your solo record. That's right great. There. Yeah. And they had it on headphones while yeah. they were watching you guys perform. It was great. <laughs> I love those guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, they really were. They were just beating and singing. You guys need to take this act and put it on the road. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you are hilarious. I did not expect all of this. I really did. <laughs> Jeez. We're both Scorpius. <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. That's it. All right. And we're always surrounded by Scorpius. <laughs> just wanted to get that in there. Except... <laughs> Gemini. Yes. Well, I'm a Virgo, so fall back. <laughs> I don't really know anything about Virgos. In fact, ask Scorpio about any other star sign. I'm like, mm, I don't know that much about that. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we're off topic. We're off topic. <laughs> we're off topic. Well, well, Roger's going to be co-hosting my Lust for List with me this weekend. Oh, good and, for you! And he's dropping a solo song, a world premiering a solo song on it and and that's kind of really cool like yeah. that's something that i think a lot of i mean cure fans know for sure you um know? i think 120 of them bought my last record <laughs> so there's definitely 120 of them know about it. <laughs> no well, to get a little it's geek- still available <laughs> to get a little geeky for a second so you mentioned like was it the old oberheim you had to go find what's your stage it was rig selena like? so i'll oh, even better. What's your stage rig like? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like got white keys and black keys and <laughs> there's two rows of them. And... See, as a frustrated keyboardist <laughs> myself, I'm actually interested and you're going to be a snarky Brit. Okay. I, you use, that guy? Really? Uh, I use a Kurtzvall PC K8 and a Yamaha Motif. And I, but everything, all the old samples run from main stage. Wow. Which is an Apple app, which thank I'd like to thank the guys at Apple for helping me with that, putting that together. But that's how I'm allowed, able to get all the old sounds. Right, see, because that's what I was thinking. And get so close to the record. Technology has changed a lot since a lot yeah. of these records came out. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting question. It's an interesting question if you're a nerd. You're, uh, with, but that's what the whole channel is. It's nerd channel. <laughs> <laughs> this is the island of misfit toys of music nerd. Even that's I'm not do. interested in my keyboards. I'm like, I walk on stage. I'm like, they're not polished. Where did he <laughs> tell you? Fuck? Where did he tell you you were going? You're going to the Where? island of misfit toys okay, of music nerd. Okay, we have to nerd. go now. Yeah. No, we're going to Florida. <laughs> oh yeah, they're going. To, I'm going back to LA. We have, have a good day. Go now. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Roger. <laughs>